uh, um, alert status from orange into yellow that this expert from the private university um, they, they insulted me and, and then the next day it happened but you know about this some other time because it's a lot of anecdotes and very nice things very funny things but anyway, <laughs> uh, this is the 5th of October in the afternoon this is world time so we have to uh, uh, subtract here five hours so it is now 1.45 in the afternoon and here's Quito and it was a cloudy day and look at this this is ash coming out this is every half an hour an image and oh, here wow. and here wow. now the city is already covered with wow. ash and you can see it goes all wow. over now as I was telling you we had orange alert before the big explosions and I remember all the dates not because I'm a genius it's easy to remember 5th and 7th of October okay fine this is the 7th of October but here I got married uh, in the church so uh, I remember this because it was free pyrotechnics for my wedding and, and this is my birthday so, uh, <laughs> so I, I, I'm a lucky guy so now this very nice one with the clear sky this one on the 7th of October once again uh, by satellite images here's Quito once again clear sky absolutely and there was no ash there was less than 5% ash in the cloud in the eruption column so everything is uh, vapor and uh, where's the sun coming up? Here in the east, of course. Here's the shadow. Mm -hmm. And a little bit less shadow, half an hour later. And so on and so on and so on. Wow. So, this is Pichincha volcano. And we go regularly there with our students. I'm from here taking another picture. And you can see on the back side another eruptive oh. column of another volcano. Here's Cotopaxi, where we're going to go. We're going to go climb up here. And this is Tuburao volcano, which is active since 10 years now. And we're going to have a commemoration of the evacuation of the city of Banyash, which is at the foothill of that volcano, in October. I'm leading the whole uh, celebration so for the volcanic event. And this day and night time, same volcano. It's very nice. Looks like uh, a prehistoric picture. Like uh, here could come now a dinosaur like this. <laughs> but anyway, so things like this, uh, we can uh, take all the time, this kind of pictures. And we have clear sky. And maybe on the way down to Cotopaxi, we can see... Uh, on, on an explosion of uh, Tungurau. It's active these days. It has, of course, up okay. and downs, but now it's, it's kind of active and we can see something, probably. This is a 12 minutes picture of 99, and this we have had uh, every between 6 and 18 months, we have big, big uh, activities. And one of them was uh, that what killed the people in 2006, like this one. The uh, most active volcano I told you is Sangai. It's uh, a little bit hidden. It's very nice, very beautiful volcano, but uh, not very well seen because it's, it's in, in the jungle, let's call it like this, uh, in the mountains. The second most active volcano is 90 kilometers east from here. It's called Reventador. And this is a picture before 2002. While in 2002, on a Sunday, on the 3rd of November, we have had the biggest explosion of the last 120 years and, uh, here in Ecuador. And uh, this was uh, on the volcanic explosive index of 4. And the ash came here to Quito. There are pyroclastic flows and everything. And in uh, five and a half hours, it covered Quito and ash. And in the moment it was precipitating ash, the monitoring people, which I will not talk about because we are like this, we are the best friends, of course, <laughs> um, uh, they informed that time the uh, mayor. And this was a scandal. It, but this was the first time, it's, it's also not going to be the last time. The problem is, we have had problems with Tuburawa and only six people died. We had people, uh, problems with Pichincha and some people fell off the roof and they died also. Uh, we had problems with Reventador, also the same thing with the roof uh, falling. But, uh, and this is a joke, I mean, this is a joke. Reventador and Hazard and Pichincha and Hazard and Tuburawa and Hazard is a joke, but Cotopaxi is not a joke. And we are here having on stake uh, around 100 to 200,000 people, their life. So we cannot, con uh, we, we cannot trust these people for managing the situation the same way like the, in the last 10 years or, or longer. So I even here, uh, as it was a big explosion, in 36 hours the uh, ash came even to Galapagos. So we talk about the big thing. It was a lucky day. 3rd of November 2002 should be celebrated as, as a lucky day. Because we have two stadiums full for two soccer games with 70,000 people and nobody got hurt. There was no panic. We were so lucky. But it was wrongly managed. And the day 
becomes night when this happens, like here. Oh, and this is the uh, airport. And this is not a, a bad picture, this is all ash. Oh. It's the acidic ash, therefore it's kind of light grey. Okay. Here the roofs. This seems like it's just such commonplace that no one really gets, you know, excited too about excited it. about it. Or, or, or do they? About what? About the ash or explosion. I or got excited, but not well, the ash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's common. it because of familiarity? Uh, no, no, it's, it's, a, it's a big pain. And the, uh, and the, and it's a big headache. Yeah. It's uh, something which um, disturbs the whole industry, the infrastructure. You cannot use the airport for a week. Um, you cannot but no one thinks house. like you know they're gonna die. You know. No, from from ash you're not gonna die. Right, but no one gets excited like oh no oh no. There's just more of a pain in. Oh, in the this mud. this there's more than this. Uh, but this is also part of the culture. I will give you an example. When they declared the yellow alert first time ever uh, in '98 uh, because of the Pichincha volcano, people got crazy. They went to the supermarket. They have beaten up each other to buy the last can of tuna. Yeah. Things like this happen because the people are not prepared. And as much as you prepare them, in the one other way, they do it wrong through TV and so on. So people, whatever you explain to them, they react wrongly. I'll give you a very good example. Wrongly, once again, people from the Monitoring Institute, they were saying, you know, there could be this wave of the explosion of the volcano, which of course is on the other side of the mountains, but still they were telling like this, they were telling Portugal, I'm sorry to say this word, but it's, it was like this. Through the wave, the windows could collapse, you know, the windows could explode. So better you put something on it. And you know what they did? They took uh, scotch tape and I made some X, you know. <laughs> and I said, these are signs for the aliens, uh, this, uh, this is not worth anything. And even in my house they did it, because they believed more the people on TV rather than me. When, <laughs> when, when this happened, I was making so much jokes about the people who filed for the tuna, who did this, who in front of the banks, I'm not joking, I'm not fooling around now, no. they, they were taking this, um, you've seen this maybe in, in, the, in the Second World War, when they are in front of a building, they have these sand bags, and they are behind us with the, with the weapons, like this they put in front of the, uh, of the banks, almost every bank, you know why? They thought Lahars are going to come. What kind of laha can come to the city of Kiri? It's impossible. But people were telling this, what and people were believing. Laha, laha, It's a it's a volcanic yeah. mud flow. Oh, mud flow. So the yeah. accumulation of ash on the flank of the volcano, with some rain, could fr uh, provoke or initiate or generate a, a, a volcanic mud flow. How is a gun going to prevent the mud flow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot that sucker. <laughs> Shoot at the, the mud flow. Back. And then how, how, do they, they, yeah. how do they clean up the city after all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One room at a time. You know, okay. they were saying no, things like, better. you know, um, you shouldn't clean your roofs with uh, water because the water and the ash become cement and then we have a big problem. I said, so uh, how, who can come to such stupid ideas? So people went up to the roofs and they fell down and some are paralyzed, some died because we talk about, you know, injuries yeah. of very high grades and, uh, and this happened. So um, the same people who were talking to TV in the morning, you should not use water. When it was raining in the night, said, what a blessing, the water takes everything <laughs> away. So there were people... <laughs>